You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 139 with Teresa McCloy. Are you busy or are you productive? We're going to find out. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, Men of Abundance? I am Wally Carmichael, your host and founder of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. We are on episode 139. Today we're talking with Teresa McCloy, and wow, this is going to be a very productive conversation. And it is so amazing how this conversation came about. I call it divine intervention. You're going to see what I'm talking about here in just a minute as Teresa and I get into our conversation. But there was stuff going on in my life. There was decisions that I made. And then all of a sudden, Teresa and I were introduced. And of course, once again, we were introduced by that amazing company, those amazing connectors at Interview Valet. These people are simply amazing. Tom Schwab and Aaron Walker, the co-founders. Karen Schwab is just simply amazing. I absolutely love doing sending videos back and forth with her. And just a few others that I've personally worked with over at Interview Valet, like Cindy, Terry, Kara, can't forget Dan Moyle. He's actually been on the show as well. I'm telling you, just some amazing, amazing group of people over there who are introducing me to even more amazing people every single day. I'm just completely blown away. And this conversation with Teresa is absolutely no different. Guys, all of you over there at Interview Valet, I thank you very much. And for those of you who have a message that you want to get out there, there's really no better way to do it these days than on a podcast. And there are so many podcasts out there for you to choose from. And of course, you could reach out to those individuals yourself. But how much better is it if a company is available and and a team is available to get all of your information and figure out exactly who you are as a person, what is your message, and who is your audience? Who is your perfect customer? Who is the perfect person to hear your message? They know where those people are at. Then they're going to connect you with that podcast host. They're going to mentor you. They're going to coach you on how to be the best guest possible to not only share your message, but to lift up the host and to actually serve and provide value to that particular podcast community and, that, and their audience. And then afterwards, they're going to use all of their social media skills and all of their graphics and all that amazing stuff, and they're going to push you out all over the interwebs. I truly don't know of any better way to get your message heard than that. And for all of you podcast hosts out there that are listening, you need people for your show, you need to contact Interview Valet. You can do that. Go to the show notes of this episode, menofabundance.com forward slash 139. Click on the link in there, get a hold of Tom or one of the team members to see if you and your message is something that they can stand behind. Because I'm here to tell you, they don't represent just anybody. They're very selective about who they represent. So if your message is just, contact them, get your message heard, get your message in front of the people who are waiting to hear what you have to say. And to all of you men out there who are not already a member of our Facebook community, I would love for you to become a member of our community. I'm inviting you right now. This is your official invitation for you to become a member of the Men of Abundance community. You can do that by going to menofabundance.com forward slash members or just click on the members tab at the top of any one of the pages at menofabundance.com. Read through that. A few of the rules are in there. And then go ahead and click on the join the community button at the bottom of that page to request access. I'll see you in the community. All right, man, let's get some real talk going here now. I hear this all the time. Every time I ask somebody, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm busy. I'm busy. You know, every day I'm so busy. I'm just so busy all the time. And when you really look at where they, you know, you look at the same man and think about this, look at yourself, look in the mirror on this, and I'm going to look at myself as well. But when you look three, six, 12 months down the road, did any of that busy add up to anything of significance? of abundance? Did it add up to any more income in your life? Did it add up to a better relationship with your family, with your wife, with your kids? And I'll bet you, I'll bet you it didn't because busy gets you nowhere. What you want to be is productive. 
And by productive, I don't mean in so many people look at this and they think, well, you know, I'm connecting with people on Facebook or I'm connecting with people in person. It doesn't just have to be on Facebook. I'm listening to these podcasts. I've read a hundred books this year. What does all of that mean? It doesn't mean a damn thing unless you actually do anything and take action. The only thing that will make you successful in life and the only thing that makes you of significance and the only thing that's going to make you an abundant leader is action. Actions are what makes the world go round. Actions are what makes amazing things happen. And only actions are going to make you a productive person in your community and in your family. Today, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the difference between being busy and being productive. And our guest today is an expert in this matter. Teresa McCloy is super productive. She is crazy about productivity. In fact, she has made productivity her business. She brings over 30 years of experience in both speaking and coaching. She has been a solopreneur and a leader in both business and ministry, giving her a wide range of experience leading teams, managing multiple projects, and juggling systems at the same time. She is a proud member of the National Speakers Association, CCNI, and the International Coaching Federation. She is on track to complete her coaching certification with both PCCI and ICF by the end of this year, and she is currently serving as the ambassador for her local 2017 CEO Entrepreneur Program for high school seniors, as well as being an active member of the local Chamber of Commerce. Whew, I'm exhausted just thinking about that. She has a certification both as an Enneagram MOS practitioner and the 12-week year trainer which is an excellent book, by the way, and we're going to talk about that. And speaking of the 12-week year, Teresa is going to be giving away a few books at the end of this conversation, so make sure you stick around for that. She's also given us a gift that I'm going to mention at the end of this conversation. Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Teresa McCloy. Teresa, welcome to Men of Abundance. How are you doing today? I am doing great, Well, I'm glad to be here with you today. Same here. Where are you at in the world? I am actually located on a family grain farm in uh, probably southern Illinois to most people because it's nowhere near Chicago. I'm actually nearer to St. Louis, Missouri here in the States. I saw that on your site. I saw that that you have the um, multiple generations um, living at that farm or at that, in that location. We do. So we're about into the third generation here on a family farm. Uh, grain farm, corn, soybeans, wheat, uh, used to have some livestock, still have some cattle. So we are the true farm to table program. Very cool. Very <laughs> cool. That sounds really, really fun and exciting and uh, a lot of work. <laughs> it is that. Yeah. Yeah. My wife and I have considered, you know, like going somewhere where we have more land and a little bit of, uh, you know, a few animals and this and that, and even just a few chickens and goats is just a lot of work. We've looked into it. It's like, oh my goodness. That sounds fun, but I don't know, man. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's a great life. It's a great way to raise a family and have kids. But uh, I won't tell anybody that it's ever easy. It's pretty time consuming and, you know, pretty committed. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing about it is that really intrigued us is the fact that you, what you said is it's a great way to raise your family and raise your kids. Uh, I actually had a conversation with another lady uh, who's going to be posting here real soon, and she has a goat farm and it's called Goat Stuff. And they make all kinds of stuff out of goat milk and all, the whole family, five kids are involved in the whole operation. It's really amazing. Well, I just... Uh strangely enough, posted a picture on Facebook, uh, just had lunch here. And I think everything that was on the plate, except for the bun and the butter for the hamburger and the corn on the cob were all raised here on the farm. So, so cool. it can be a pretty self-sustaining uh, operation if you want to go there. Yeah, I really like that. So before we get too much into our conversation here, I really like to start the show out with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, Teresa? Well, it's exactly what we're talking about. I got to work outside today uh, to sit at the table on the porch and and get to work from that space. I got to work in the garden. I mean, those are some of my favorite things, and they're actually a part of my story even of just really connecting back to you, um, you know, my values and my purpose. So today was one of those days that really affirmed that for me. 
Definitely. Yeah, I can definitely see that. So before we got started here, I talked a little bit about what you've been doing professional wise and what you're doing for business owners, which is really cool. I really can't wait to get into this conversation for the guys to listen to our productivity conversation. But here on Men of Abundance, we really like to get to know the person behind the greatness and behind the abundance. So if you could share a little bit more about yourself. We've already shared about, you know, your location, where you're at, what you enjoy doing. But let's get a little bit more personal. Sure. Um, well, currently I do work as a business productivity coach, but obviously that's not what I've always done. I kind of took a journey through life, as I like to say. I've done a lot of different businesses. You know, while I was raising kids, um, my husband and I, I worked from home. I had a, a studio here in my home where I actually taught music lessons and had about 60 families, believe it or not, involved in that program. I've done a retail business. So I've done a lot of different things. And in that, uh, I always felt like I jumped from job to job, but I really think a lot of experience was gained. Uh, it always involved either marketing or music or sales or technology, which is one of my great loves. And through that, I've just realized in the past few years, I always worked around this idea of how could we do it better? How could we be more effective, more efficient? And so, you know, sometimes life's just a journey of learning um, and taking all that knowledge then and, you know, kind of putting it back into what you're going to build your business around. Yeah. And you said, a, right, exactly right. And exactly why I wanted to have this conversation with you, because there's no lack of information. There's many people have more knowledge than they'll ever use, you know, as far as making an income or even making a difference in the world because they're not productive and they're not taking action on that information. And it's just sad. Yeah, because, you know, we gain all kinds of information, all kinds of skill sets in our lives. But what we really uh, don't get to is how do we execute on the plan? <laughs> Um, how do we put the plan into action? And I use a phrase in some of my marketing to stop being productive and really do what matters because productivity anymore just means that we're super busy. You know, we're doing mm -hmm. lots of things, but boy, some of the things that we're doing are really not executable plans. They don't really tie to our values. They don't tie to what matters. I had to go through some pretty tough stuff. I'll be honest with you over the past six years or so to really kind of, you know, you call it the gut check, but yeah, I really get to those gut check moments where I'm like, wow, you know, I'm so far out in left field from what I really want to do. Well, speaking of that, let's just go ahead and get right into that. That's a great transition right there. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> and well, uh, I'll, I'll, go ahead. Yeah, you're, you know, I shared with you, you know, some of the things that you'd ask as we were in some pre-conversation really brought me to that place of, my goodness, I didn't realize, you know, you really got to have those moments to move to the next place. You absolutely do. And that's part of the reason why I asked that question in the kick in the gut moment, because so many people that I know that are just making a significant difference in the world, in their own personal lives and their families and the communities and so on, many of them, a large majority of them actually had a huge kick in the gut moment and then a follow on enough is enough moment. Some people call it an aha moment. I call it enough is enough. I've, I've had enough of this. I got to make a change. I got to do something. So let's get into that. I'd love for you to share that kick in the gut moment that really kind of perpetuates you, per perpetuated <laughs> you into that, <laughs> into basically what you're doing now. Well, uh, to be honest, and this is going to get real personal, but uh, I think personal always ties back into our professional life as well. And so for me, it really was one of our adult children uh, about six years ago came to us and said, I have a problem. I'm addicted to drugs. And so that was a real story. You know, that, that's a set up and take notice moment. And I won't go into that so much because that's really uh, their story to tell. But you know, as a parent, that really affects your story too. So mm -hmm. for me, that's when I really hit uh, kind of the wall, so to speak, and realizing how addicted I was to work. And I always call myself a workaholic. And uh, that's really where I was. I was looking for that affirmation and that approval from other people in the work that I did because I did have the skill set and the ability to really do great strategy with people, uh, to see the bigger picture in projects. 
And so all of my skills were great skills, but I was using them to such an extreme that it'd become my own addiction. And so, you know, when one of our children came with his problem, I really had to do some deeper work and look at my own self, uh, you know, and all of that. And it led me on a pretty significant journey over the past five to six years. I can see how that would do that. And how did that specifically, as far as your, you know, get a little bit more personal on that, uh, as far as your child and coming to you with that information, how did that make you kind of look back at yourself? What did that look like for you? Well, for me, I mean, you know, it's interesting too. you know, my husband and I each dealt with it differently. You know, you go through the guilt, you go through, uh, what did I do? You know, what could I have done differently? Was it because I was working so much? And so, um, at that particular time I was working in some nonprofit work and with a church and some different things. And so, you know, am I giving so much to others that I miss this? Um, and so we just really, had to do our own personal journey work of what is it about me that's driving me so much. And and I did that through some different tools. Uh, I used uh, accountability. I used coaching, um, some support groups. Uh, You know, I dived into something that I use now with all of my clients called the Enneagram, which is a personality assessment tool that goes really deep into some false belief stuff. And so uh, I just had to do some really deep work and take back and kind of take a season of waiting and just kind of step away from some things so that I could be present to my own work and the work of our family. Right. And what did you find during that time? What did the coaches bring out in you? And what did that that um, personality test bring out for you? Well, I had a lot of false beliefs. You know, I believe that I needed affirmation from other people. Uh, you know, it really dives in and can dives into, you know, what are you feeling shame about? What's what's your worth about? Uh, where are you trying to get that affirmation? Um, that Enneagram tool gives you kind of nine different ways. There's nine different ways that we view the world and you sit in one of those nine spaces. And depending on which space you sit in, uh, you desire and need different things. Some people come out of fear. Some people come out of shame. Uh, some people actually come out of anger. And depending on where you're coming from, you kind of have lived your life in certain patterns of behavior. And you wonder sometimes, how does that like back to kind of where I ended up in productivity. But until you kind of really know yourself, uh, that's why I say you got to know what really matters to you. And I don't think I did. I think I lost that for a while and kind of went on a track of letting the world tell me what mattered. Yeah, I think those personality tests are really important. I've taken several of them, everything from Myers-Briggs to I haven't done the disc. I hear a lot about that one, but I have not heard about the Enneagram. And when I saw that on your profile, I started to look it up, but then I got sidetracked. So then I was like, well, this is why I'm going to have this conversation with Teresa. (laughs) (laughs) And you know what? I will tell people this. If you Google it, you're going to feel like, oh, my gosh, this is out there in some woo-woo new age stuff. It's really not at all. It's based in some really ancient uh, teachings and practices. And uh, it, it can be tr- transforming for, you know, working in leadership, working in uh, if, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a small business owner, how you work and engage with other people. I personally think it goes a little deeper than just a Myers-Briggs or a DISC because it really gets down to some of those core beliefs that we've grown up with, uh, that were formed in us in early childhood and kind of how do we break past those now that we're adults and that we're in a different space, it kind of can really be a restart to kind of, you know, jiggle some things loose, so to speak that go, wow, that's why I process everything that way. And I don't want to do that anymore. I want to process it differently. Oh, well now that brings up a different, uh, part of the conversation right there is is so from taking this test then you can kind of evaluate what you're doing and like you said you can start making a decision on how you're processing information because most of the other tests that I've taken they're like okay this is who you are this is where you you know you're going to be the chances of changing that are pretty slim because that's deep rooted but some of these areas can be changed so can you expand on that a little bit more Sure, I would love to, because I think that's the key to, uh, you know, to the Enneagram is it shows you kind of your weaknesses. And many times, um, and I shouldn't really say weaknesses, it's more your false beliefs. Mm. You know, this is something that I've believed 
about myself for a really long time. Uh, for, for me, it was that I have to prove that I'm worth something, you know, that I have value. So how would I do that? Well, I would work harder. I would work smarter. I would work more, <laughs> you know, so that was what I was driven by. Now that I'm aware of that, it doesn't take away that strength. It just makes me aware overdo it and to uh, be mindful that I need uh, healthy patterns of behavior, not, you know, way out there. Another person might come through anger, uh, you know, through, gosh, I just deal with everything in a very gut reaction way. And so sometimes that could come out of some suppression of anger. So now that I'm aware of that and I know that I can be, uh, I can handle things differently. So it's some really deep work. It goes into some brain science and, you know, psychological, it kind of covers a lot of different things. And man, when you come out on the other side of that, though, the awareness that you have as an adult, we get so stuck and we feel like, yeah, this is just the way I am. I'm just going to be this way the rest of my life. And I just don't believe that's true. No, I don't either. Because uh, the reason why I can say that for without a doubt, 100% is I've been through uh, one of the courses that's many courses that I've taken throughout my time in the military was a master resiliency uh, trainer course. And I've sat down and trained hundreds of people in resiliency. And there's specific modules and techniques and information that you first find out about yourself and realize why you do certain things and why other people do certain things and then adjust to that accordingly. And it really does make a huge difference. Um, it has in my life and has in many other people's lives. So that being said, with the people that you work with, uh, what are some good news stories that you've that really stick out in your mind that you've been able to help people in their uh, daily activities and being more productive? Well, when I can use these tools and I can, you know, as anyone knows that works in kind of a coaching space or a mentor space or whatever, when people first come, they come with, you know, pretty big, like, help me figure this out. Like, you know, I'm way overscheduled or I'm way overworked. So that's kind of their pain point. And when people can uh, use a tool like the Enneagram to understand some of their patterns of behaviors, and then we can work into, uh, you know, some things like I love the 12 week year program. That's another tool that I use. So I love seeing clients go from, you know, now that I know myself, I can put it into kind of that operating system. I call it, you can develop a new operating system, a new way of, uh, working in the world and working in your occupation and with your team. Uh, yeah, I just love celebrating that moments with clients when kind of the light bulb goes off and they're like, Oh, this makes sense now. If I just tweak this a little bit and then manage my time a little bit differently here on what really matters to me, sometimes it's getting rest, taking a day off, those kinds of things make all the difference for clients. So I love celebrating those moments with people. I'm all about taking rest and days off. <laughs> Absolutely. We all need a 24 hour break from technology. Uh, you know, it just affects our brain differently. And, you know, I just really believe in getting outside and getting some sunshine and taking a day off. Absolutely. Yeah, my day is one of the things that I do. First thing when I get home is my phone, everything, it goes on the desk that I have here and it's face down mute and I'm not on it for the rest of the night until maybe later on during the week when the kids go to bed or something like at about nine o'clock. And I usually have it on my schedule, but that's when I may get back on the computer, check a few things, but then that's it. And it really that's has, before that it was like nonstop. I'm just facing the phone or a computer, one or the other. Right. And that's, Awesome. I mean, that's something I really encourage my clients to do because I didn't used to have that pattern of like, figure out what time is good for you to call it a day and then call it a day. Mm -hmm. And we can use the excuse, oh, we're just checking Facebook or we're just doing this. But it really takes us back into uh, a different place in our heads when we get in front of technology and just even our overall health to be in front of a screen for that long every day is not good if we use it in all even in workspaces you know we're always in front of a screen now yeah yeah I'm in front of a screen all day long pretty much about 80 percent of my day is in front of the screen and uh you know reading that thing and and then of course at home on your leisure time like you said it also depends on what it is that you're looking at especially if you're looking at Facebook with you know so much negativity so much you know some of these conversations can really get you 
your blood boiling and and you know get your head in a in a bad space before you go to bed, which isn't a good thing in itself, which is a whole other conversation. Mm-hmm. And so you know, I just love helping clients, whether it's in one on one or I love to do masterminds and groups. Uh, you know, get a bunch of people together that may come from the same space. Or maybe they're all from different spaces, which is, you know, different workspaces, which is great, too. But uh, to just walk through like the 12 week year together, see how you can implement that and use that as an operating system, um, because it is all about uh, productivity and kind of maybe a different mindset using things like the Enneagram, just really getting people to do a little bit deeper work. Not everybody wants to go there, but those that do really reap the benefits. And um, I love that. Yeah, so let's talk about the 12 week year. That book has been recommended on my show a couple times. A couple mentors of mine are doing it in their mastermind groups. They've gone through the book with their groups and I just keep this book just keeps popping up and I'm already reading. I've already got so many on my list that I've been putting this one to the side, but now I've seen it at least 5 times and so many other people have recommended it to me personally and you are a certified trainer which I didn't even know was a thing. So I'm sure you can talk much more about it than some of the other people I've talked to. Well, I am a certified trainer. I was actually privileged to be one of the first 20 that they've trained this past year to kind of uh, help take the 12 week year program out a little bit differently, uh, more into what I call the entrepreneur space, uh, you know, the space where small businesses 12 week year uh, is a New York Times bestselling book uh, that Brian and Mike wrote together. And it comes from this idea of, um, you know, athletes used to train and still do to this day, especially like Olympic athletes in very short time periods on a certain muscle group. And I'm sure you've heard this before from your background, but you know, Mm -hmm. if you just really train in a certain space for a short period of time, you can really make some great development in that way. And so it's this idea of periodization. And so they took that model and brought it over into, you know, a lifestyle model or the business world as well. And said, what if instead of the old model of 12 months as being our, you know, timeframe that we're going to work in, what if we work in periodizations of 12 weeks at a time and call that a year? So it is a mind shift to think, you know, from, you know, whatever you start your 12 week year, the next 12 weeks, you're going to pick two to three big rocks that you're going to plan, have tactics around, have action steps around. Uh, You're going to measure those, how you're doing in those 12 weeks. Are you getting the five to six tactics that you want done in that 12 weeks? So just think about, you know, instead of 12 months out of the year, you're working in four 12 week periods you're getting almost four times as much done in those bigger action items that you want to move towards. Yeah, I like that. And as I was listening to, I watched a couple of uh, videos that Brian was doing. And the first one that he has there on the site, on their website, as I was reading or listening to it, I was like, you know what, at the very basic level of this, this really goes down to, let's break it down so that everybody can really understand this is you're in college. And you got your semester and you've got your final exams coming, or you have a, a paper, you know, 500 page or paper coming up and you've got, let's say 12, let's say you've got, I don't know what it is, six weeks or something like that. Well, you got mm-hmm. you say, I still got six weeks to get this done. I can go out and have some beers with the guys, or I can go play basketball or I can go do this. Next thing you know, you got three days left and you get the whole paper done in three days. Well, mm-hmm. it's a, it's the time frame, and I've heard this over and over again. I used to always watch all these shows, you know, like The Apprentice when it first came out. I was like, why do they put such time constraints on themselves? And the reason is because you can get more done in a shorter period of time as long as you lay it out right. So the twelve week, the twelve week year, I'm imagining, really works through all the mechanics to really set that up for you. Right. We work on there's five disciplines, you know, planning. Uh, of course, you know, what is the goal I'm going to work on? And then, uh, you know, you need to put your tactics to it. Just, you gave a great example. I got to write a paper. Okay. If it's a 600 page paper, then week one, I'm going to do my research week two, I'm going to do this week three. I'm going to do this, you know, week four, I'm going to start writing the paper, you know, and you break it down so that you don't feel overwhelmed. If you'll just do that one thing, that one week, you're going to be done at the end of the 12 weeks. 
But what we do is we procrastinate. So the first thing you do is what are you going to do? So that's planning. Uh, then you uh, learn how to put it into a process control. You know, I'm going to process through this with the tactics and the actions week by week, what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at it every week. I'm going to have accountability with someone mm. and that's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, meeting in a weekly, I call them WAM meetings. And that's what a lot of my masterminds are about. They include that weekly accountability meeting. 10 to 15 minutes with somebody saying, this is what I got done this week. And it's not to hold like you're in trouble if you didn't. It's more about holding people capable, not accountable. Accountable has kind of a bad word to it. And then how do I manage my week? And that's when it gets down to the nitty gritty. You know, what a week look like for me? Am I putting in big blocks that I can strategically work in? Am I having some fun time blocks? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. breakout blocks, we call them. Uh, and the other one's called a buffer block where we put like all of our email, our phone calls and everything into uh, 30 minute time frames, you know, two or three times a day, instead of, you know, having all those notifications going off saying, check your phone, check your email, that urgent, but not important. Uh, Stephen Covey talks about that mm -hmm. in a lot of his stuff. Yeah. And so Brian, I'll tell you too, and Michael both, there's nothing new under the sun <laughs> to their system, except for the 12 week process, this periodization process, and really doing less, not more. That's probably the hardest things for people to implement in the 12 week year. They want to put down way too many goals. Um, you're just talking about 12 weeks. You're not talking about 12 months. So it's a little bit of a mind shift. I always tell people, give yourself a couple of 12 week years and it'll start to feel more comfortable. But man, you can just make just a little bit of progress. Uh, it's fantastic. It's been life changing for me. Yeah, one, like you said, most people make way too many goals. But even if you just have one huge goal, what they're mm -hmm. doing is, and it is very simple, and it's not anything new. Like you said, it's you're, you're just breaking down a huge goal, and you're breaking it down into daily manageable activities to get mm -hmm. to that. And, and then there's so much more to it. I, I just love it. And, uh, you know, guys, one of the things that I get from this and, and from what Teresa just said, it's really not anything new, but it's something – presented in a different way. And a few, you know, the 12 week year is different. I've never heard of that before. And really, it's about experimenting with all of these different techniques and different things so that you can figure out what works best for you, because one thing may not work for, you know, for everybody. So I appreciate you sharing that. And it's very interesting that you were able to be one of the first 20 to be cert a certified trainer. And that I think that'll intrigue many people. So yeah, it's great. And um, I'll throw this out right now if you want me to. I mean, Brian and Mike are pretty generous with uh, what they've given me to give back to others. And one of my things is to be generous always. So I'll have a link at the end of the show. We'll share it that, uh, you know, I have some free books that I can give away on the 12 week year. So if anybody's interested, uh, I can get a book in their hand for them. Absolutely. I'll be stepping up and uh, be uh, candidate number one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Wally. Because I've already got this one on my list and, and stuff. So I was already telling my office, I got to get this book now. And, and um, But no, I, I really appreciate that. And that's right in line with our abundant mentality here. So Teresa, we are going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders at this point. You ready to do that? I sure am. Excellent. So give our abundant leaders one to three actionable steps that they can take today. Well, I'm going to do this one around productivity and something that's pretty easy to engage in. And that is one of the best things I've found is to buy a notebook, a really cheap one for every month of the year. And so this month we're getting ready to start is August uh, when we're recording this. So you buy a notebook for August, write down all your thoughts, all your phone conversations, all your to-do list, everything in that one cheap dollar notebook and just carry it with you everywhere you go because then you can capture all of that instead of on my laptop, on my phone, whatever. If you want to transfer it out of there at the end of the day or the end of the week, that's great. But I still find that writing things down in one place doesn't have to be a date book, doesn't have to be a journal, just a notebook really helps me keep my thoughts together and not miss things that I want to do. You know, again, everybody's different, but I'm just like you, Teresa. I've tried the apps. I've tried the productivity apps. I've tried the journal apps. I've tried the reminder things. There's something about pen to paper that really is, is it just works for me. I have to, I have 
four journals that I write in throughout the week and not every single day. And one of them I do keep with me at all times. And it's those important things I need to, you know, not a, not a to-do list, just things that are important to me. And it does make a big difference. It does. There's something about our brain that engages differently when we write it down. And then, you know, I tell people all the time, sticky notes go everywhere. They get lost, all of Mm -hmm. that. When we're using three or four different systems to try to keep things together. And I was addicted to all those apps. So, uh, I love technology. I've tried them all, but I still find for most people in general, that one notebook where they're putting stuff and then do one per month, then you can file it on your shelf, you know, with that month and start another one. They only cost a dollar at the dollar store and you know, you can afford to buy 12 of them in a year. And you know, if you don't fill it up, that's fine. Just put it on the shelf and you can look back later if you need a reference. And that's the other thing I love about it is looking back at some of my silly ideas and, and some of my brilliant ideas. I'm like, Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah. And kind of bring it back to life. I love mm-hmm. that. So what daily habits make up the biggest impact in your life, Teresa? Um, I think a couple of things that have really changed for me in the past few years is I try to do about 15 to 20 minutes every day of just kind of silence. I usually try to do that first thing in the day, just focus, uh, just that mental focus. If I don't get it done first thing in the day, then I try to do it right at the end of the day just to kind of clear my head. And so that's been huge for me, that kind of silence and solitude thing. And then the other is having a time that I stop working every day. For me, it's six o'clock at night. I try not to do anything after six o'clock at night that's around work until I put that definite time in place. And it's a hard struggle sometimes. um, That's been a great habit for me. Excellent. So other than the 12 week year, because I know you'll bring that one up. um, What are you reading or listening to now that you would recommend to our abundant leaders and why? Well, I'm going to recommend to you a good friend of mine that I've met in the past year that is a great uh, leader of men. His name is Aaron Walker. Love him. And he, uh, yeah, (laughs) yeah. And uh, Aaron has a new book out called View from the Top. Mm -hmm. And I was blessed to be on a cruise with him back in February and get a pre-released copy of that. My husband read it on the cruise, loved the book. And so for your guys, I think that, you know, anything that Aaron does, is uh, great stuff. I also would recommend The Road Back to You, which is a book on the Enneagram. Um, Easy Read gives it in a great format. Uh, It's written by a guy called Ian Crone. But if you just, you know, put it on Amazon and type in Road Back to You, those two books I think would be excellent for your audience. Absolutely agree. I will chime in on Big A. Uh, Aaron Walker has been, he's the only person that's been on my show twice. And I got the pre-read as well. Just an amazing individual. He does some really, really good Facebook Live videos from the fairway. And you got to go watch those. He is about as real as they come. Road Back to You, haven't heard of that one yet. And I'm sure I would have if I had continued with my research on the uh, personality test, but I did not. So I will be checking that out. And I'll have all of that linked up in the show notes at menofabundance.com. Thanks for recommending that. So sure. What do you feel holds most people back from living a true life of abundance? I think we have a great fear. I know I did of, uh, if I'm transparent <laughs> that, uh, you know, if people saw the real me, I think we really suffer from this imposter syndrome type mm-hmm. thing. And I think technology can feed that pretty badly. You know, what we present uh, in our businesses online, in Facebook and all the things. I think once we can get past that and really get real, uh, then we can really start to do the significant thing that we're supposed to be working on. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree. I am exactly the same way. I'm open about it. People have contacted me and say, hey, I want you to coach man this, that, and the other. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm doing. I know I'm living an abundant mm-hmm. life over here. I have a great life, and I kind of know how I got here. But I've coached people in health and fitness, but who am I to coach somebody on living a life of abundance? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, but I have multiple, that's why I stay around, you know, these masterminds. And that's why I hang around with people like you and Aaron, because Aaron's like, 
what's the deal, Wally? When are you going to finish your book? You know, <laughs> what have you done today? You know, people, you know, people need your story. They need your message. And the same with you, Teresa. I, they just need your, your expertise and, and your experience and everything that you've done. So yeah, get out there and do I'll, it. I'll never forget Aaron calling me out at the uh, cruise. I hadn't known him that long, but he'll, he'll call you out and oh, tell yeah. you what you should be doing. And I, I love that about him though. And, and I love people that will be that honest with me and can really call me out on my stuff and say, you know what, just give it real. And that was part of that journey clear back to you when our son's addiction came forward. You know, I was living in a spot where, yeah, I thought I had it together, like you said. And man, I've gone on a totally different direction as I've had to become really real and really transparent. And it's it's a blessing. It's great. It truly is. Absolutely. So what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Teresa? Well, you know, I love that question. And I loved being able to kind of do some thinking around that because it really comes back to my values and made me revisit, you know, my values are my family, friendship, fun, forgiveness, and generosity. And so if I can live in those places, I know that I'm living an abundant life. But if I don't check in with those places on a regular basis, I can get so off track so fast. So for me, it's those things, you know, family, friendship, fun, forgiveness, and generosity. I love that you said that you got to consistently check in with those because I, I'm the same way. You absolutely. You lose, you, you get too much down the road on one of those areas and the others kind of fall back. Uh, it goes back to the, the, uh, the one thing with Jay Pepizan and Gary Keller and that uh, they mentioned in there about balance and it's more of a counterbalance because as you're trying to progress in one, the others are going to kind of fall back. So you do have to revisit those. Yeah. And it, and you know, you and I both know there's no such thing as perfect balance. Mm -hmm. And so there are seasons of life where one's going to take a little more. And that's what I love about the 12 week year. You know, there might be a season where one of your 12 week year goals really comes around family or really comes around, you know, for me, uh, friendship or working in my business or whatever. But then maybe the next 12 weeks, I got to look at, wow, I can't, keep working just in that area or I'm going to be totally out of balance. But, um, balance is a weird word, but if we can check in with them all pretty regularly and share those with our accountability person. So they're helping us check in with them. Absolutely. You definitely need that coach, mentor, accountability partner, whatever you want to call them. They all slightly different, but you definitely need somebody in your life to call you on it once in a while. Yeah. And some of us more, more often than others. <laughs> For sure. I'm a little stubborn, so I need one pretty often. <laughs> you and me both. My wife is my biggest accountability partner, and she's always kicking me. So we're going to yeah. close this up, Teresa. It's been super fun. What did we not talk about today that you'd, love to, that you'd like to ensure our abundant leaders get from our conversation today? I think we covered a lot. We got some pretty big things in there. So I'm not sure that we missed too much. Uh, you know, encourage people to check in if there's anything I can help anybody with. That is huge for me, that generosity factor. I'm in a season where in my life where I can do that. And so I want to be all about generosity. So anybody that wants to reach out, let me know. I'll do what I can. Excellent. And we're going to have Teresa McCloy.com linked up in the show notes at menofabundance.com. Is there any way else that anybody can get in touch with you? Yeah, I will have. I'll give you the link, Wally, to your listeners. If they go to TeresaMcCloy.com forward slash abundance, there'll be offers there that's just for your audience. Again, I'll have a place where uh, they can sign up on email. Uh, I'll give away free books until I run out. Um, I have a certain number that I can give away, so I'll do that till I run out. But uh yeah, if they go to TeresaMcCloy.com forward slash abundance, that'll go straight for your audience to some free uh, offers that I have there for them. Absolutely wonderful. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'll have all of that linked up in the show notes at menofabundance.com, guys. Just search Teresa and we will make sure you get access to that link. It's been really fun. I really appreciate all the information. I definitely have to get more productive myself. Uh, I think I'm doing pretty good, but there's always room for improvement. And uh, I appreciate you sharing your personal journey with us. Thanks, Wally. It's been fun. I, Your audience sounds like a great group of guys. Oh, they are. Aloha. Aloha. All right, guys, it's time for you to look in the mirror and be truthful with yourself and decide, are you being busy or are you being productive? If you're just being busy... 
All you got to do is correct it, man. Don't beat yourself up about it too much. Just adjust and use some of the tools that Teresa just mentioned to start being more productive. We'll also be talking much more about productivity and holding each other accountable in the Men of Abundance community. So make sure you get access to the Men of Abundance community. I look forward to seeing you there. Now go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.